This Honda was, indeed, the finest EV in the world at its launch. It had 80 miles of range, it could go from 0 to 80% charged in about 2 hours on a home 240 volt outlet. And those numbers could rival a 2010 Nissan Leaf, but in a car from 1997. So why haven't we heard about it? I'm Victoria Scott, staff writer at MotorOne.com, and today I'm going to tell you about the Honda EV Plus, the most important electric car you've never heard of. Electric cars have been around since the dawn of the automobile, but from the early 1900s until the 80s, the only feasible battery option was lead acid, like the 12 volt battery under your hood. Lead acid batteries have a lot of downsides. They have low energy density per pound, they're bulky, they produce toxic gases, they're filled with liquid acid, and they don't last long after being run down to no charge repeatedly. As a result, despite dozens of EVs on the market in 1900, by 1920, there were almost none. Commercial attempts disappeared until the fuel crisis of the 1970s, when a handful of unsuccessful vehicles, like the wedge-shaped penalty box city car, hit the market. As the crisis eased and gas prices fell once more, EVs vanished again. But an uptick in environmental concerns and broadening awareness of global warming meant that zero emissions EVs were destined for a comeback. In 1990, California's Air Resources Board, known as CARB, issued its first zero emissions vehicle requirements. The targets were ambitious. By 1998, 2% of a carmaker's total sales in the state had to be all electric. By 2003, 10% of total sales had to be electric vehicles. Automakers sprung into action to meet the new requirements, including Honda. Honda assembled a team of 100 engineers to build a battery electric vehicle that would meet California's new requirements. Their first attempt was converting a hatchback Civic into an EV. They used lead acid batteries and off-the-shelf components, and while the car ran and drove, it was very rudimentary. Honda management was not pleased, and they ordered the team to completely start over. The team's directive was to build the finest EV in the world. The old brush motor was out. Honda would develop its own new unit in-house. All of the creature comforts that gasoline car buyers expected, air conditioning, heating, power steering, would all be retained. The new car would have regenerative braking, and most importantly, it would ditch the 100-year-old lead-acid battery design for nickel-metal hydride, a new technology at the time. In April of 1997, a year before the California mandate was set to take effect, the first Honda EV Plus rolled out of the company's factory in Tochigi, Japan. It was the first mass-production EV to not use a lead-acid battery. It beat the Toyota RAV4 EV's public launch by half a decade and the GM EV1's nickel-metal hydride variant by two years. Automakers balked at the CARB requirements as batteries didn't improve significantly enough, and the 2% goal was scrapped. CARB, in the end, only required that a couple hundred cars were built. Honda discontinued the EV Plus in 1999 as soon as it hit its goal of about 300 cars. All 300 of those EV Pluses were leases or fleet cars too, so when the cars were returned to Honda, they were destroyed. The hatchback design actually comes directly from Japan, which is part of the reason as to why it's so small. So it's actually smaller than an EG Civic hatch. Unfortunately, there were only four dealerships in California that ever offered this thing for lease, so it was pretty hard to get your hands on one. If we take a peek under the hood, we can see the EV Plus's drive unit. This is pretty revolutionary in and of itself. Instead of using an off-the-shelf brushed motor, Honda developed a brushless motor in-house. At the time, basically no one was doing this, but now brushless motors are basically industry standard. This thing was no slouch either. It had 66 horsepower and 203 foot-pounds of torque. It was good enough to rocket the EV Plus from 0 to 30 in under 5 seconds, although the 60 came in about 18. The interior is pretty typical Honda for the era, but the gauge cluster is this extremely cool digital unit that has power bars for how much charge is left, and a digital speedometer. It looks a lot like the later Honda Insight and S2000 clusters, and this makes sense. They both came from the Takanazawa plant in Tochigi, just like this car. The battery pack that made this car so revolutionary was a 28.7 kilowatt hour nickel metal hydride pack. Nickel metal hydride batteries never materialized into the breakthrough they were hoped to be, largely because their power density never improved enough for electric cars. This tiny little thing weighs over 3,500 pounds because that battery pack weighs half a ton by itself. The EV Plus is forgotten today, a footnote of early EV development, but it should be respected for how visionary it was. Brushless motor, advanced battery chemistry, even the charging port on it influenced how all electric vehicles would charge for decades to come. It would take a decade after the car EVs of the 90s for electric vehicles to truly come back. 
but this car indisputably helped show the way.